and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you attending this webinar, wherever you are in the world. My name is Tom Getchus. I am uh, Clinical Practice Director at the American Academy of Neurology in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I am the Chair-Elect of the Guidelines International Network North America Chapter. I truly have the honor and privilege to moderate today's webinar and um, the honor to work with uh, such esteemed colleagues and those that are presenting. So without further ado, I am going to uh, introduce each of our presenters and then I will pass this over to Mary Nix. Um, but Mary Nix is with the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality and is a lead for the National Guideline Clearinghouse and the National Quality Measures Clearinghouse. Uh, next in the presenters is Vivian Coates. She's the Senior Vice President at ECRI Institute and the Prime Contractor for the National Guideline Clearinghouse and National Quality Measures Clearinghouse and is the Project Director for uh, both Guidelines and the Quality Measures Clearinghouses. Uh, Elizabeth Willingham is the co-founder of Silverchair and serves as the Client Strategist for the NGC and the NQMC on behalf of ECRI. Uh, she also provides technology platforms and services for ARC's Patient Safety Network and the nation's leading medical societies and publishers, including the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American College of Physicians. And Scott Oschlager serves as the business analyst and leader of the developer team, serving the clearing houses and manages the implementation of the responsive redesign of these sites. So I'm really looking forward to um, getting a preview of the NGC and the NQMC sites. Um, please do pay attention. Don't wander too far from your computers. We are going to have some uh, responsive polls, uh, not only to gauge kind of audience participation and individuals that are on here and what you're looking for, um, but I know that ARC and ECRI, you know, NGC and NQMC are really going to look for um, our feedback um, as, as this development unfolds. So Mary, I'd like to turn this over to you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, we're really excited. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality is really excited um, at the opportunity to present to you today a demonstration of the redesign websites that are forthcoming. Um, you know, roll the uh, roll the drums, right? Um, it should be soon, and we're looking forward to your response to it. We hope that what you'll find is that it is uh, improves your experience. Um, and yet still helps you find what it is that you're looking for. So without further ado, I'll turn it over um, to Vivian and the APT team um, that she leads. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mary, and welcome to everyone. And at ECRI, um, we have been working with Silverchair on this redesign for a long time now, and we are terribly excited about it. Um, we think you're going to find that this is not only compatible with the mobile environment, it will be optimized, and beyond that, it gave us a chance to um, improve a whole lot of things on the sites that had been there over the years, kind of um, legacy um, ways of doing things, and we think you're going, we hope, that you will see that um, with these redesigned sites, um, you're going to have a lot more enjoyable experience. And with that, and with no more delay, I'm turning this over to Scott and Elizabeth. Thank you, Vivian. This is Elizabeth. Um, uh, we're so grateful to have the opportunity to demonstrate the work of our great team here at Silverchair to update both the National Guideline Clearinghouse and the National Quality Measures Clearinghouse. During this presentation, um, as has been mentioned, we will be posing some polling questions because we're excited to have this opportunity to hear from you, our users. And I hope you'll also submit questions through ReadyTalk and we'll do our best to answer them during the presentation. So just to get started, we, we do have two polling questions which are designed to uh, assess your primary interest areas and to assess your knowledge of the focus of our presentation. So Tom, if you can give us poll question one, hopefully everybody can see this. Question is, in this webinar, both NGC and NQMC um, are, uh, will be demonstrated. And I apologize if some of the questions are a little bit unclear in the way they're displaying. We, we had a, a character limitation that we weren't aware of. 
So I will also read them out loud and hopefully that will make them clearer. So both sites will be demonstrated. Are you most interested in NGC, NQMC, or both? And I'll give everybody a little bit of time to answer. Yeah, and we've got some great responses already coming in. We have uh, approximately 60 people on uh, this webinar, so a great turnout. Um, and 45, 48 more responses ticking in. Um, this is just going to put people at the edge of their chair. I'm going to close this poll and actually skip to the results. Um, and you can see most people are interested in the NGC website, so 54 percent. Um, you know, many also interested in both. Not a lot in the quality measures, but I suspect that if we eliminated NQMC or took out both, we might have a pretty even split. So Great. let's go on to that Thank next you. question. Sure. And um, again, these answers in the display are, are truncated a little bit, so please do listen for a little bit longer explanation of them for poll question two. So the question is, what is responsive web design? Is it A, online technical assistance that offers immediate responses to inquiries? Is it B, an approach to website creation that results in the same online experience no matter what device is used? Is it C, a cost-effective technology that allows creation of more than one website at the same time? Or the last response is, is it a tool that allows users to interact with and add content to a website? So it looks like we have a lot of, uh, of uh, smart participants who are knowledgeable about what responsive web design is, so that's great. So uh, I am assuming that a lot of the things that I'll be talking about and demonstrating will be somewhat familiar to you. The Clearinghouses first launched on the Silverchair technology platform in July 2010 and have had many feature upgrades since that time, including the launch of a new search engine last year. But the current redesign project that we're previewing today is the first time we've done a complete redesign of the website since that launch six years ago. Even if you're not a web designer, you probably think that the current home page for the National Guideline Clearinghouse looks a bit outdated. And most Internet users are probably aware that the standards and aesthetic choices for web design evolve over time. Changes in website design are driven by innovation and aesthetic preferences but most important by the needs of the users. The strongest user need exerted in the past five years has been the tsunami of need to access the web with a mobile device, both smartphones and tablets. About half of all Internet traffic is now via mobile devices, and the mobile users of the clearinghouses certainly got our attention in 2014 when 20% of all traffic to the sites began to be via mobile devices. So with this, we want to go to the next poll question, number three. Tom, if you can present that for us. And the question is designed to assess what is the behavior of the participants listening today. The question is, have you tried to use NGC or NQMC on a tablet or a smartphone? Yes or no? I'd say overwhelmingly at this point, it looks like no. Um, okay. Well, and if the if the people who have answered yes, a uh, smaller number, albeit, but I'm I'm interested to know if you have tried to access the clearinghouses on a tablet or a smartphone. Did you do so and then abandon the mission because of the user experience? Yeah, our next polling question number four is up on the screen. So this is, if you did try, did you, did you uh, find it not a great experience? And it looks like we have sort of mixed, mixed results, but definitely some people who have tried and, and, and uh, seen that it has been very difficult to have an optimal experience on, on mobile. We launched the redesign project in January 2015 with the goal of implementing the technique of responsive web design. As it sounds like many of you probably know, the aim of Responsive is to provide an optimal user experience on all devices by adapting a fluid grid, 
flexibly sized images, and the ability to detect what type of device a user query is coming from in order to deliver the properly sized experience. An easy way to think about it is illustrated by the content is like water concept. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. So content on the site will adapt to your smartphone, your desktop, or your tablet. Responsive web design makes use of a number of design conventions to accomplish its goals. These include using a larger font and more white space in recognition of the fact that mobile users touch with a finger to click rather than using a cursor via a mouse. Links are actually referred to as tap targets. In response, we are also designing for mobile first rather than as an afterthought. This approach allows designers to consider and avoid worst case scenarios from the start. In responsive, we also have heavier use of drop down menus and pop ups, which allow more activity in a smaller space. For this redesign project, we enlisted the leadership of a senior designer at Silverchair who had never worked on the clearinghouse sites before and brought a question everything approach to the current sites, which Vivian mentioned. This very positive outcome of this experience means that we'll relaunch the sites not only with responsive design, but with improved functionality for the desktop experience as well. I will highlight a few examples of these improved features during the presentation. Finally, one quick caveat about what you'll see today, and that is that we're not quite finished yet. Our target for relaunch is June 29th, and we're still working on some fine points. So don't be surprised if you see a little bit of raw cookie dough here and there. We are still baking. So without further ado, welcome to the new National Guideline Clearinghouse. The new home page with its prominent search box speaks to the fact that most users come to the site to search for specific information or the answer to a specific question. Note that the site will keep track of searches and present them to you for a quick rerun of that search, but with the most current results. The home page also serves as a map for the key site content. So we've provided entry points to that content in the global navigation, specifically content that is new this week, the guideline summaries themselves, guideline syntheses, expert commentaries, the matrix tool, the guideline submission page, and help and about. We've provided a way to browse the guideline summaries by clinical specialties, by mesh tag, and by organization. On the home page, you can also view announcements, and see which guidelines are the most viewed and have been recently viewed. To demonstrate how the water for NGC adapts to the container it's in, we now we want to show you how it will look in tablet view and in smartphone view. So this would be the tablet, and then smartphone. So, I have a question now I'd like to pose. This would be poll question number five, Tom. There we go. So the question is, how do you most often access content on NGC and or Q and QMC? Do you do it via Google? Do you search on the site? Do you browse on the site? Or do you have another methodology? Hmm. Yeah, overwhelmingly thus far, we're seeing that people are are selecting that they're searching on the site uh, by a huge order of magnitude here. I think we That's can display these results. Yeah, over seventy seventy over seventy five percent, seventy seven percent searching on the site. That's great. Well, we, uh, we're glad then we made this choice to make it quite obvious and easy to, to uh, enter the content that way. So to return to browsing, this is the experience if the user wants to browse by clinical specialty. If the user clicks Oncology, he or she is taken to a search results page for all guideline summaries tagged by the ECRI metadata team as being about oncology. Did 
Okay. If the, if the user would like to browse by a more specific mesh tag, he or she can navigate the mesh browsing experience into the search results page and perform more specific faceting to get more specific results. If the user would like to browse by organization, all guideline summaries have been collected under the name of the organization that developed the guidelines. Note that if you have a personal account, you can sign up to receive alerts anytime that guideline developer organization has changes or additions to the site. Next. I would like to show you the meat of the site, which is a guideline summary. Guideline summaries take a templated approach to the thousands of guidelines hosted on the site and are the important work the ECRI team does to standardize the presentation to make the use of guidelines more consistent and to allow easier comparison. A summary page is the page that many guideline users will come to directly from Google without coming to the site homepage. The features of the guideline summary page include the name of the developer, the source, the status, and the rich classification. Again, the ECRI team plays a valuable role here by enriching the guidelines with tags from as many as eight constituent vocabularies of the Unified Medical Language System. This effort facilitates accurate searching and browsing and builds meaningful connections between the guidelines. The summary also features tools for jumping to the specific sections of the summary, to download the summary to Word, PDF, and XML, to share via email or social media, to download a citation to a citation management tool, and to save a guideline summary to a personal account. Note that you can sign up for alerts that will let you know when the developer of this guideline has a content change on the site. The user can also expand and contract the section of the summary for ease of use. So there are two additional important things I want you to note about the central user experience. One is that we're still working on a change that will bring the recommendations section of the summary to the top. This is in response to user feedback that the recommendations provide the information and answers to questions most needed by the user. And secondly, I'd like for you to see how this page looks on tablet and on mobile. Note the contraction of navigational tools, but their complete availability and the easy readability of the content. Great. So I know that many of our participants, this is Tom, I know many of our participants, actually all the participants are on mute minus the presenters. Um, I noticed in I'll tell people I'm a little bit biased. When we went through a, a run through, I said, where's the Academy guidelines? So I appreciate you using our TENS guideline um, as one of the examples. But what struck me was there was a section that you scrolled to for implementation plan, and it said there was none. Um, how are users going to, um, you know, how are they, you said a strategy was not provided. How do developers provide such a strategy? I would have to defer to my colleagues at ECRI to answer that since it's content oriented, Tom. Okay. So I'm going to ask Vivian, I'm going to ask Lisa Haskell to take that one. Okay. I don't know if Lisa is. Go ahead. Yeah, she's with me. So can you, can you hear, if you can hear me, you should be able to hear Lisa. Okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, hi, Tom. This is Lisa Haskell. I'm the project manager for uh, NGC. And uh, to respond to that question, that's usually information that we can find from looking through the guideline or any of the documentation that comes for it. Um, we look for it. Um, also, uh, when the guideline is sent out for developer verification, uh, if by any chance uh, we've missed it, uh, the developer has the opportunity to put it in. Um, so uh, to answer your question, that's where we get it. Okay, great, thank you. 
And there's another question I want to ask uh, Elizabeth. I think that you can answer this one. When we look at the downloading um, the references cited in the in the guidelines, does this go to? Am I only downloading the citation of the guideline that's in the clearinghouse, or the measure in the clearinghouse, or am I also able to download all the references that are cited in the specific document? So you're, when you're on NGC, you're only able to download the citation to the guideline. Um, okay. it, it, does not, it does not download the references actually within the guideline. Okay. When you're on NQMC, you can download its citation again. But okay. what, yeah, what, what, you're, what you're doing is grabbing uh, the citation to this new, basically this new content, um, okay. this new summary of the guideline. Is that clear? Great. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so next I'd like to show you guideline syntheses. Syntheses are systematic comparisons of selected guidelines that address similar topic areas. First we show you which guidelines are being compared, and then per the guideline attributes template, the content describes their areas of agreement and differences. The major recommendations, the corresponding strength of evidence and recommendation rating schemes, and a comparison of guideline methodologies. Also included are the benefits or harms of implementing the guideline recommendations and any associated contraindications. Another important content type on the site are expert commentaries, which feature editorial insights into current issues and guideline development. Next, we want to look at the matrix tool. With this tool, the user can select a field to filter NGC summary content by selected attributes. A table of all guidelines at the intersection of those two fields is generated. So for example, if the user wanted to know if there were, are anesthesiology guidelines with algorithms, he or she could select clinical specialty for the column data and implementation tools for the row data, and then view the anesthesiology guidelines that have algorithms. Unfortunately, this table will still be too wide to display on smartphone though the user will be able to download it to Excel and email it for viewing later on desktop. The matrix table will be viewable on tablet. Now moving to search. Search is a feature that is being upgraded with the responsive redesign as part of our question everything approach. To improve the ability of users to narrow search results to a more precise list of relevant content, we've brought key aspects of the summary into the list of facets. This functionality basically brings advanced search into the forefront in an easier to use experience, and it responds to observed user behavior, which is to usually run a fairly broad search from the search box, but then to want to narrow that list of results. So for example, if the user would like to know what guidance is available on antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent surgical site infection following orthopedic surgery, he or she could run a search for antibiotic prophylaxis for surgical site infection and then narrow the results by clicking the clinical specialty orthopedic surgery. Can I interrupt you again, Elizabeth, with a question Absolutely. that I have? Sure. So in the in the searching, you had kind of that three-step search where you looked for anesthesiology guidelines with uh, algorithms. Are are there only two dimensions or domains that can be searched, or are there other, or can you can you specify even further? In the matrix tool, I believe you can only pick two. Um, I might want to get look at that again and let Lisa just confirm. Yeah, you can only pick two in this tool. When you're searching for something, you have a lot more options for choosing as long as uh, you know, the, the facets um, contain the information that you're looking for. And the facets are, are really driven by the way the summaries are organized in their template. So yes, there are some limitations on the matrix there. It's much more expansive in search. OK, great. Thank you. Sure. So while we're showing you search results, we want to call to your attention the improved user experience for the compare feature. 
As on the current site, users can click the Compare box by individual search results. The next steps will be more clear and easier to use than in the current design. In the current design, the final outcome is a table that is too wide to view on mobile at all. In the responsive design, the presentation will be vertically displayed so that it's easy to scroll through on a smartphone. The last feature I want to show is My MGC, which allows the user to set up a personal account. We want to encourage users to create personal accounts if they haven't already done so, because there are a few features that you can't make use of without one. These features include the ability to change your email address and password, the ability to sign up for alerts to the addition of new content of interest, and the ability to save summaries. Specifically with regard to alerts, you can sign up for alerts about specific organizations or specific topics of interest. You can also receive alerts about the publication of expert commentaries. So at this point, I'd like to pose poll question number six, Tom, if you can put that up for us. And you could probably guess go. what this question is, and that is, do you have a personal account on NGC or in QMC? Are you able to tell us as we're having many people say no, um, how many accounts there actually are at this point? Uh, oh, I do not know off the top of my head. I don't know if someone at ECRI happens to know. We're going to look that up for you. We don't know I hear a lot of general. scrambling. Yep, that's yep. okay. <laughs> Um, well, and I, I mean, I would say that in previous discussions, I think we agree that we would like to have more, and that's why we're trying to enhance this feature. So um, it's, it's good to see that some people do. And I guess the next question is, of the people that do not yet have one, do the features that we've just talked about make you more interested in setting up a personal account? You know, one of the options while, while people are completing and saying a majority of them are saying yes, is there an opportunity to follow, um, you know, some of these uh, comparing documents? Is that can you follow categories or can you can you just follow organizations? I guess, um, I guess right. when I'm looking to personalize my feed, what type of personalization can I um, enable? Um, so you can do topics, um, and I don't know if you want to turn back over to Scott. If you see in, in my NGC, there is a list of topics that you can choose to get um, alerts on. So I don't know if that, that meets your needs. The, the idea about following some of the compares is an interesting one. It's not something that we've implemented but I would definitely like to think about that for the future. So, and, and any other suggestions that users have about ways to personalize the site and make it more useful for them, we're always open to hearing. Yeah, I do want to tell the participants you can enter, if you're thinking about some of these features or personalization, enter those in the chat. I can download the chat and provide that as a, as a document from this community that we could share with, with SilverChair ECRI and ARC as they, as they improve that. That's great. We, we always love to hear um, people's ideas. Um, and I want to just pause now for any other general questions about what we've shown for uh, NGC before we turn to look at NQMC. Are there any other questions, Tom, you'd like to? I'm, I'm not looking at them, so I have to rely on you to let us know. No, that's fine. I, uh, there was one that came in the top three benefits of creating an account. I think that you already um, that you addressed that. I'm just giving a moment here to see if other people are going to be typing in questions. Um, and I don't remember if you provided this in your remarks, um, but how 
long of a process has this been to really, you know, wipe the slate clean, start from ground zero, and reimagine the site? How long has this been? We started with that sort of design inquiry and the question everything approach back in January of 2015, um, and spent you know most of that that winter and spring really just in that design iteration phase. Um, with lots of back and forth between us and ECRI and ARC, um, and then really began the build about a year ago. Um, and even we, we use an agile methodology for software mm -hmm. development, and so even during this year, as uh, great new ideas come in from our wonderful collaboration with ECRI and ARC, where we try to be as responsive as we can be to them, to make sure that what product we release is has the most up-to-date thinking. Um, so we, you know, we do have to sort of cut it off and decide, okay, this is what we're going to launch with at the at the end of June. But um, anybody who has been involved in a web project knows that it's a constantly evolving process. And even after we launch, we'll be seeking ways to improve the user experience um, in the next year as well. I mean, in many ways that I think about this, it's like building a house. It takes longer and it always costs more money. Um, <laughs> so there are more features that you want to add. And speaking of, there have been uh, two comments that came in I, I want to at least orally address. One, uh, pediatrics. I think uh, we should be able to search by peds topics. I know in neurology, the American Academy of Neurology, you know, we do we develop guidelines for adult neurology and child neurology and for measures adult and child. Um, I think that'd be something that that individuals are interested in adding. Um, ICD-9 and is ICD-10 something that's going to be a, a search topic as well? Uh, well, Mary or Vivian, would you like to take that one? Um, Lisa's going to take that one again. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, yes, you can search by ICD-9 number. Um, that is um, underneath the um, classification, the mesh browse. Um, and then pediatrics is a clinical, clinical specialty. So yes, you can search. Uh, oh, uh, great. Both ways. Great, so, thank you so for Tom, that. Another, yeah. go ahead. Tom, sorry, it's Mary. I think um, when I'm looking at the question um, <clears throat> uh, that was asked about ICD-9, um, uh, it looks like it was wondering about our addition of ICD-10. Um, so currently we tag using ICD-9. Um, we recognize that ICD-10 has come into practice as a um, the more um, up-to-date um, ICD nomenclature, um, and as we uh, upgrade our UMLS vocabularies, um, uh, that should be part of it. So I just wanted to uh, respond to that part. ICD-10 um, um, sh should be coming. Um, it's part of the new UMLS um, ontology, you know, package of ontologies, and um, uh, should be one that that we add. <clears throat> so I just wanted to m make that clarification. Okay, great. Thank you. One mm -hmm. other question. Um, I know that I'm receiving, and probably a number of individuals who are receiving the weekly emails, the, the updates or changes from the NGC and QMC websites. Is that going to continue going forward, or with this push for, towards accounts and personalization, is that going to, is that going to be impacted? Uh, yeah, it'll it'll continue. The same alerts that we send out now will continue. With additional alerts that users set up. That that's correct. Okay. And the frequency of the the personal alerts, how uh, can we change the frequency of that, or is it only as new content is added or removed? That is a good question, and I don't know if Lisa knows the answer to that. I don't know if those, if they they go out weekly or and are bundled up. Um, weekly. Yes, yeah, those go out weekly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a response to the question about how many um, personalized accounts there are. 
And yes, for please. NGC, there are um, 3,570. And for NQMC, there are 375. All right, thank you for that. Sure. I think, Elizabeth, let's switch over to the NQMC side. Great, great. Um, so my demo of the NQMC responsive redesign will be a little shorter, simply because most of the new features are, are the same as on NGC. If you, if you know how to use the guideline clearinghouse, you will, for the most part, know how to use NQMC. As I demo, though, I will call to your attention differences between the sites. The redesign homepage for NQMC has a search box as its central focus as well. As with NGC, this homepage provides a map to the site content and gives entry points into key content, including new, new measures, the measure summaries themselves, expert commentaries, and the matrix tool. Two differences from NGC are that this homepage also has the entry point into the HHS measure inventory, and the methodology for browsing content is a little bit different. On NQMC, users may browse by measure domain, by measure setting, or by organization. In Browse by, by Domain, users can choose to browse measures grouped together as either healthcare delivery measures or population health measures. Choosing a specific domain takes us into search results for all measures in that domain and the opportunity to further refine the results using facets. Users can also browse by measure setting to receive results for all measures relevant to a particular setting. Browsing by mesh tag works just as it does on NGC, so we're not going to show it here now. Browsing by organization on NQMC differs from NGC, however, because measures are collected in sets. After clicking on a set in the organization browse, users are able to select a specific measure from the results page. As with NGC, the measure summary is the key content on the site. The measure summaries provide a templated abstract developed by the experts at ECRI designed to standardize the presentation of the measure and improve the ability to compare measures. The tools available are the same as for NGC, though of course the template of the summary itself is very different. Because summaries can be long, the user has the ability to expand and contract the sections. And of course, the measure summary automatically resizes for tablet or smartphone as the device is detected by the site. NQMC also has expert commentaries. Um, they display as they do on NGC, so I'm not going to show those in detail. Like NGC, the matrix tool has the same functionality that I previously demonstrated, but of course the rows and columns the user can select are different for measures than for guidelines. Mm -hmm. To move back to onto search, as with NGC, we've brought the advanced search type of faceting forward into the search results page, though the facets are particular to the measures, of course. And likewise, the compare feature works basically the same way as it does on NGC, but the selections are appropriate to measures. And finally, again, we encourage all users to set up a personal MyNQMC account to take advantage of the ability to save measure summaries, to change your email and password, and to set up alerts about content added by specific organizations or expert commentaries. 
So unless anyone has a special request to see something again, this is that ends our official demonstration, but we do have one final poll question, uh, question eight, Tom. Um, and uh, I have a feeling that everyone will be able to answer this uh, correctly. And again, sure. our answers are shortened a little bit, so if you can just listen to my, my reading of the selections to be, be clear what, we're, what the choices are. The question is, which of these additional tools and services will be coming soon? Technical assistance video tutorials. On NQMC, the tagging of measures as core measures, which will reflect the public-private collaboration on identifying measures that matter. On NGC, tagging guidelines as covering multiple chronic conditions. URL redirects to address user saved bookmarks from the old site to the new site, or all of the above. Yay, everyone's getting it right. <laughs> yes, very yes. nice. Yeah. Yes, all, all of these are features that are in the works. Um, I don't know, Mary or Vivian, if you want to say anything um, in addition about some of these, but we did want to just give you uh, an even uh, longer term preview into what we have in store for NGC and NQMC. And um, happy to take any additional questions or demonstrate anything if anybody wants to see something again. Well, I think a couple questions that have come through. One was on the exporting. Uh, someone asked about, will measures be able to be exported? And I wonder, I haven't received clarification in the chat, but I wonder if this is similar to the citation manager. Can measures, citations also be exported into um, citation managers? Um, they're not exported into a citation manager, but you can download them as Word actually in the download. You can download them as PDF, Word, or XML. Okay. Um, a couple questions on this. When are these sites going to be rolled out and available? Uh, our target launch date is June 29th, so very soon. Wow, eight days from now. Yes. And all of our enhancements are going to be incorporated by then? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, we'll add them to the list for sure. <laughs> sure. But uh, yeah, we and and there there are lots of you know we we highlighted some of the the um, the bigger features that we're going to be working on in the coming year. But I would say over the next month or two, you will see smaller refinements as as well. I'm also curious, it looked like you uh, were demonstrating in Google Chrome. Is that the preferred browser when you're on a desktop site, or is, um, another, is, is it going to work in any browser? It's going to work in any browser. We always do very thorough cross-browser testing. Um, we're aware of that some organizations um, in our user, you know, that our user groups belong to require that certain browsers be used. So we want to make sure we accommodate everybody. Okay. And can you talk a little bit, uh, maybe a, a minute or two, about the, the testing process? Does it include heavy users of um, the NGC and NQMC sites, or was this kind of done um, externally? Well, we have internal um, quality assurance at Silverchair, so experienced software testers. Um, are you know on our team and part of the process, and we detail uh, very explicitly what user acceptance criteria there are, and the quality assurance team members have to make sure that we meet all of those. Um, certainly, the folks at ECRI, um, who are extremely knowledgeable about how the sites work, um, participate also in testing and giving feedback. Um, and certainly the folks at ARC as well do thorough review and in particular do um, a very thorough um, uh, 508 um, testing to make sure that we support all users with disabilities. So we've, uh, I, I think we've been very thorough with this um, as we do with all of our projects. 
um, and we're, we're certainly excited to roll it out since it's been such a long time in the works. I hope everybody feels like it's been worth waiting for. Yeah, I think it's really great. I, I mean, we, as you saw, we have a couple guidelines that are in the in the NGC and uh, measures in the NQMC side. Um, I think you had talked about this before, and maybe Lisa, you can cut me off if you think this is a question that we should take offline. But um, the process for uploading guidelines to NGC is that something we should discuss here, or should we kind of take that offline? Yeah, we can sh we can show you that page. I didn't I didn't include it in the demo since it's fairly straightforward and utilitarian, but it definitely exists, um, and we're we're happy. Scott's bringing that up right now. Okay, great. So, so great. Tom, this is this is Vivian Coates. If you can hear me, so submitting yep. guidelines to NGC, you don't, as you know by now, you don't just upload them. There's a whole process around which you know we evaluate them against the inclusion criteria, and we iterate back and forth with you to make sure that we have all the background documentation in hand as well as the source guideline itself and so on and so forth. So it, it's a process. Okay, great. I haven't seen other questions come through, so Scott, if you want to demo that, that's great. Otherwise, we have about five minutes before we'll, we'll conclude the webinar. Um, I mean, I don't think that there's really anything that we can, um, we can show. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm personally not prepared to talk in detail about this page. Sure. I don't know, Lisa, if you want to jump in. Well, I think, you know, we could skip that at this. We, let's pass okay. on that at this point. Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, I think there are very clear instructions about what to do when you get there. Sure. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. It's Mary. Yes, Mary. Go ahead. I, I see that there's a follow-on question to the ICD-10 um, code question. So um, the question is, when will ICD-10 codes be added? And I wanted to clarify that um, on an annual basis, ARC and ECRI work out um, the work that will be accomplished um, in that year. And the UMLS upgrades is one of those you know, kind of work packages that we're going to be um, discussing uh, how we can get this done and by what timeline. So I don't have a specific answer, um, but it is on our radar um, to get complete. So <clears throat> I just wanted to circle back on that. No, thank you for that. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Sure. So at this time, I'd really like to uh, conclude and thank uh, Mary, Vivian, Elizabeth, and Scott. I mean, the work has been extraordinary. The website looks great. I've been having some private chats with people, uh, very very good friends and colleagues in here that, that have uh, given us some sidebar about how this really looks nice. And I think the mobile optimization with people accessing more content, not just guidelines, but more content through their mobile phones and tablets. Um, this really, uh, really brings both of these sites um, to, to a whole new level. Um, and I hope too that we will have more individuals that access these sites when they go live and create profiles. I know that I will be. Um, so again, thanks to the four of you for, for presenting and being available today. Uh, you should see on your screen our next webinar will be July 12th at 1 o'clock Eastern. Note the time change. Uh, typically they're in the afternoons, but we're going to move it up a little bit to accommodate some schedules. Uh, so Amir Kasim, uh, who is on the JIN Board of Trustees, is going to share with us the JIN COI policy. It's been about a year. Uh, since the uh, GIN has introduced that, and we'll have Marguerite Coster, our past chair of the GIN North America uh, chapter, be um, moderating that session. And again, as always, if there are other topics that you would like to hear um, or you would like presented or more information, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, let us know. Finally, um, ReadyTalk, the uh, platform that we've been using for a number of months, um, does a great job recording these, syncing the audio and the slides, um, and we are able to have those um, typically posted to the GIN site, uh, the North American Community page under webinars. Um, you can see the URL right here. This will be recorded, packaged, and put online within a week, so we hope that you will uh, access this webinar, 
see the library of past webinars uh, and interact with the community. So having nothing else to say, again, thank you to our presenters. Thank you for your participation. And we hope that uh, you have a wonderful Fourth of July celebration. Bye-bye.